Hi everybody. I am so excited today because I just got something at the front door and look what it is. I got a box. And if you know anything about the time we're living in right now, you know that we can't just go outside and shop whenever we want something new. So really the only way that we can get new things is through the mail. And so today I had the surprise of getting a box in the mail and I am super duper excited because this box came to me from Osborne Books and More. And Osborne makes amazing books. And so I thought that I would open up this package live on YouTube on the video so that you can see all the cool things that I got in this box. So here we go. I'm going to open up the box. Let me put it here so that you guys can see too. Okay. Wrapping the paper, stuff like that. Receipt. Very good. Here's the first book. Ooh, this is so cool. I've never seen this book before. This one is called States and Capitals. And this teaches us about the 50 United States and all 50 capitals so cool and i like this because at school i teach geography and for the k through third graders we are learning all about the states and the capitals and so i'm so curious what's going to be inside this book okay let me put the books on the floor let's see here take states and capitals explore the capital cities of our 50 states nice okay each of our 50 states has their own unique history and character, as does their capital city. Interestingly, a state's capital city is not always the biggest or most important city. In fact, many state capitals are fairly small, but they all have a capital building which houses the headquarters for the state's government. These are illustrated ma on the maps or marked with star icons. That's true, they usually have stars. You can learn a lot about the history of a state by visiting these impressive buildings. Okay, this is so cool. And it has all the states in alphabetical order. You see that? In alphabetical order. From Alabama all the way to Wyoming. And then it has the flags, state flowers, and animals. Look how cool. So for example, I'll show you the state that I live in. I live in California, which is right here. California. Just by looking at this page, can you tell me what the capital of California is? Where is the capital of California? Oh, you can see it because it's right under the title page, uh, the title right there. Ooh, and if you can tell me what the flower is, then you will know what my favorite flower is. Can you find the state flower of California? That's right. It is the poppy, California poppy. So beautiful, I love it. So this one actually shows me a map of our city, um, of our capital in California. And it shows me what I can see if I go to Sacramento. It looks like there's the American River up here, the Sacramento River over here. There's a zoo, there's a Rose Park. Ooh, there's even a Sutter's Fort State Historic Park. And then there's a Capitol Museum and a Railroad Museum. How cool is that? Well, let me see another state. I have some cousins that live in North, no, in South Carolina. Let me see if I can find South Carolina. L-M-N-O-P-Q-R-S. South Dakota, that's not the one I was looking for. <gasps> South Carolina, here it is. There it is. So can you tell me what's the capital of South Carolina? Yep, you're right. It's Columbia. That's right. Columbia is the capital of South Carolina. And their state flower is, ooh, a yellow jessamine. That's beautiful. Okay, so if I were to go visit Columbia, what could I see there? Well, I can see a war dog memorial. I didn't even know that. They have a memorial for war dogs. We can see the South Carolina State House. We can see the Congari Vista. Oh, I don't even know what that is. I should ask them. Tunnel Vision, Hootie and the Blowfish Monument, Never Bust, African American History Monument. Yeah, sounds like a lot of really cool things that they have there in South Carolina. 
nice. I like it. So this is my first book from Usborne. Let's see what else I have. Okay. Here's my second one. This one is called That's Not My Hedgehog. And I love this series of books. I have some other ones like That's Not My Angel, That's Not My Puppy, That's Not My Panda. It's a lot of them. And this one is a new one that just came out. And it's called, it's part of the series called Usborne's Touchy Feely Books because on every page you can actually touch and it has some kind of texture. Every single page has that. And so this is really good for um, babies, toddlers, preschoolers, but honestly, I even like it. And on every single page, there is a little mouse that is hiding. So every page you have something to feel and you have a little mouse that you can look for. It is so cool. So let's look inside. That's not my hedgehog. Its ears are too fluffy. And then you can see how there's a fluffy ears on the hedgehog. That's not my hedgehog. Its paws are too soft. And then you touch over here and it feels super velvety soft. And do you find the mouse? Oh, there it is, right here. There's the mouse. That's not my hedgehog. Its nose is too shiny. And you can see if I go like this good and you can see the reflection. This nose is too shiny. And do you see the mouse? There he is, right here. Very cool. So this, this page is, what I love about these, it doesn't have a lot of pages, but the pages are super thick. Super, super thick. So that babies can play with it. They can try to break this and it's not going to break very easily. Love these books. And I bought it because I have a baby niece now. And so I'm going to start reading these with her pretty soon. Okay, next one. Oh, speaking about my baby niece, here's another one that I bought for her. This one actually is ready for me to read to her right now. Because babies, when they're young, they don't see a lot of colors. They don't see the difference between a lot of colors, but they definitely see black, white, and red because those are the colors that the eyes see easiest. So I bought this book. This book is all about the black and the white and the red. So you can open it up like this, and it's this big, wide book, and I can teach her the animal names, dog, rabbit, cow, sheep, hen and horse, but it has another side to it. I can open it up this way, and now it has a little bit more colors, because as she gets older, she can see more colors, and she actually can see all of those animals and to see where they belong on the farm. Isn't that so beautiful? I can't wait to show this to her, because babies can't really do a lot of things, like they can't talk they can't walk they can't run around but they can look and they love it when you read stories to them wonderful i can't wait to be able to go visit with my niece and read this to her so that one's on the farm let's see the next one. Oh, this one i've got for my boys my boys are a little bit older and so they don't like little baby books very much but this one is cool and it's something i've never seen before from usborne it's called usborne stem technology scribble book so this is something that you're actually going to write in it i know a lot of books we say no no don't write in it you're going to ruin it but this one you're supposed to write in it and so you open it up and it has all kinds of infirm okay so it says write your name here so that we know who you are and then it has things like what is technology talking to machines uh silicon doodles Word builder, drone design, internet of things, data mining, 3D printing, origami tech, um, sci-fi tech, thinking logically, computers of the future, all kinds of things. So it tells you about technology. It tells you what's in this book. Let's see. Ooh, talking to machines. Computers work in a language called machine code, which is made up of just two symbols zero and one. The zeros and ones represent the state of millions of tiny switches inside a computer's memory chips. They show whether each switch is off zero or on one. That's cool. So I think what they want you to do, oh, each zero or one is known as a bit, short for binary digit. Bits can give the computer all sorts of information from words to images. Shade the on switches below to reveal an image. Oh, so it wants you to shade all of the on switches, which was the zero, and it's going to give you an image. 
That's so cool. This is a lot of stuff I don't understand, but Michael sure does. He's going to love this book. Okay, let's see what else. Auto text. And then you get to make some text and messages yourself. Capturing motion. This is kind of cool. I've seen this where they do this in movies where they have people wear these costumes and they have all these little dots on them. And so as the person moves their character in the movie, like their computerized character moves like them. That's pretty cool. And so I guess you get to make your own figure. Firewalls. Uncharted waters. Sonar. Uh, for sound navigation and ranging. That's cool. Did you know that they use computers on boats so that we don't run into things? So that we don't bump into things or so that we can find fish that are underneath? Very cool. Thinking logically, food, genetic and engineering, stuff like that. And something for the future. That's awesome. So this is the book. And there's a lot of different scribble ones. So if you're interested in science, if you're interested in like um, drawing art, there were a lot of different scribble books at Usborne. A lot of different kinds. Now, these were not my first Usborne books. If you look back here, you see I got a lot of Usborne books. So I'm going to show you some of those that I've had already. This one I had already is the Coding for Beginners. So this is using Scratch. And it's some basic, basic information about coding. Like if you've never learned anything before and you want to learn about it now, you can make a virtual pet. You can have a space adventure. Oh my, lots of, it looks like you can make your own games. That's pretty cool. And it has website links where you can go and do extra things. Yeah, and you can make your own menu for your game. I think it looks like you're making a game in here. That's pretty cool. Another thing that they have is sticker books. Now all of these sticker books happen to be Christmassy ones, but I like what you can do with them. This sticker book is you get to dress the dolls. And so it has pictures of dolls and then you get to find the stickers that are at the end and it tells you what page they go at the pantomime or party time or skiing and you get to choose their outfits and then you get to dress them up for the different um, occasions that they're going to. This one is so cool and it has so many different kinds. The sticker dolly dressing. Yeah, another one that's awesome and right now you might have a lot of time and you might be bored and so you can do doodles. And I like this one because usually doodle books, they're usually just black and white. And so it's up to you. And so they might not look very nice, not very inspiring. But these ones are all colored. Every single page of this thing is colored. And it started off the picture for you. Because I know sometimes when you're trying to make a project or be creative, you just don't know where to begin. So this one already tells you. Five hot air balloons floating in a summer breeze. And it's your job to design them. Or this campsite is fully booked. Ah, here comes the rest of the tents. So then you get to design the rest of the campsites to see what they're looking like. This one, six blank bunny shapes and a pack of pens. What will you do? Or here, doodle four designs to give your team a new look. This one is really, really, really cool. And in this book, you have 1,000 doodles that you can do. All right. Oh, I already read to you guys this one. The Jonathan James and the What If Monster. And this one is also from Usborne Books. And you can go and buy this one there. And then this one is only $6.99. And if you want to have your own little What If Monster, then you can buy him too. They're both for sale on the webs on the Usborne page. All right, there you go. Oh, this one is cool. And this one is doing art and math at the same time because it's called Colors by Numbers. And so in here... It has different numbers. You have no idea what this is going to look like in the end. The only way you're going to find out is by use this color code. Number one is light blue. Number two is dark blue. Number three is yellow. Number four is green. Number five is red. And number six is pink. And when you finish coloring them, see even on the cover. When you finish coloring them, then you're going to see what that code was for. And you're going to see a finished a finished product and sometimes if you do not want to use numbers they have the color dots already so all you have to do is fill it in with that dot with that color so that one is a color by number book that one's really cool let's see 
do nice, be kind, spread happy. This one is really cool. And this is something that we can do even though we're kind of stuck in the house and we can't really go around and do much, you know, much of anything. And so a, a nice way to use our time is to do nice things for people. It might be through the mail. It might be just the neighbors that live around us or it might be even online and some kind of things that we can do to spread happiness. Oh, this one's really easy. Sticky notes. Grab a stack of sticky notes and start scribbling. Write messages such as, don't work too hard. Today is definitely going to be great. Everybody says you are awesome. And stick them in places where people might need cheering up, which could be all around your house. And it might be fun to put them somewhere where you're hiding them so that they don't find them very easily, like inside of a drawer or maybe underneath their laptop or maybe on their pillow or maybe in the bathroom on the mirror or on the fridge inside the fridge you never know where they're going to see it and then it can be kind of like a fun game that you do you could ask an adult to take them into a workplace or put them on people's desks well we can't do that right now but after our after this is all done we can do it um letters of kindness this is a good one put together a letter writing kit with pens envelopes papers and stamps and give it to a retirement home or you might have it, um, you might give it to a neighbor if you have a neighbor who is older and they can't leave their house very much right now, you can give it to them. This is a great way to help seniors keep in touch with friends and family who live long, uh, long far away. You can even offer to mail their letters for them too. I made a mailbag out of an old pillowcase and delivered a bunch of letters from the senior center and I got a lots of things and two cookies, yum. Let's see. Make a wish. Grant some wishes. Get some gold or silver stars from a craft store and make a simple card by pasting a star in the middle and writing. Make a wish upon this star. Sleep with this card under your pillow and your wish might come true. Love from your wish wizard or fairy godmother. You could place it inside an envelope labeled please pick me up and leave it somewhere that someone will find it. Good places to leave your wish is inside a book, in a store or library, on the seat of a bus, or in front of the door of your home. And I know right now we can't really do that, but you can leave it for someone in your family to find it. That might be kind of cool. So this one is all about acts of kindness that kids can do to spread a little joy. So that is also available from us for This one is a big book and it's heavy, but that's because it has so much in it. It is the Usborne Geography Encyclopedia with complete world atlas with internet links. So this is printed, but it always, it also is connected to a lot of websites. Every single page has an internet link where you can see more. So if you want to find about the rainforest, there it is. If you want to find out about thunderstorms, there it is. If you want to find out about how earthquakes happen, we have lots of earthquakes here in California, but a lot of us don't know how they happen or why. And here we go. How earthquakes happen. Did you know that there are different kinds of earthquakes? Different kinds of motions? Yep, there are. Let's see. Ooh, the Earth's crust. Did you know that the Earth's crust is made up of different layers and different pieces? Kind of like a puzzle. We can learn about that too. Let's see. It talks about different people. It talks about different continents like this one has about Europe. This one looks this one looks like it's about um, Central and South America. It is super, super duper cool. I love this because I teach geography at school. Oh, it even tells you about the different constellations in the sky. That's awesome. And then, of course, all the flags of the countries in the world. Very, very, very cool. Okay, and these are all art books because I teach art also at school and so I wanted to buy all of their art books. And it's fun because these are lift the flaps. So this one, again, it's thick pages, so you're not gonna break it very easily. Everybody can touch it, even the little kids. It doesn't have a lot of pages, but it has a lot of stuff on each page. So if you open up, for example, here, this one is telling us about moving images. This picture was created using movements. The artist splashed paint onto a spinning canvas. As the canvas whizzed around, the paint flew outwards, creating a burst of color. That is so cool. 
this one here is a painting it is a blur of shapes and colors designed to suggest speed look carefully can you make out three figure hunched over a bicycle angular lines crisscross the scene suggesting a forceful movement and so here this is a little flap that we can open and you can see that was the original sketch that the artist did before he painted and then he added paint now can you see the man or the figure on the bicycle let's try that again see the sketch which was done just with pencil and here is the painting isn't that so cool so so cool this one is talking about optical illusions this is talking about an artist who would build mobiles and that was his kind of art and they would hang them oh this one looks like it, oh this one has to twist that's cool so that was his kind of art it will tell you about artists that are really famous like monet like um joseph wright like uh, sonia de lune like um surat did you know that surat paints just with dots he didn't use any lines or any other shapes just dots to make his painting do you know how many dots are in this painting so 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 many it took him years to be able to finish that because he just used tiny little dots very cool so this is about art if you wanted to learn more about different artists there's this one i know i use this one when i teach the kids about art because we want to learn about different artists like van eyck van eyck he was from holland i believe is he from holland oh belgium sorry he's from belgium albert dure Raphael, Bruegel, Caravaggio, lots of different artists. So you can see this one has more um, words on it. It's for older kids. And that one was more for little kids. But this one has so much information. And Monet, of course. Monet, my favorite. Look, at Monet had glasses. I had no idea. He had to wear glasses because he had to have. And here is a real, real picture of Monet. Isn't that so cool? That's what he looked like, and that's where he was working in his studio. So those are all different books that I have from... Oh, there's one more. One more, Animali. Oh, I love this one. It is so cute. I love you, Animali. I think I'm going to read this one for you guys. This is by Lynn Paris Sutton, illustrated by Hazel Mitchell. I love you hugely like a whale. I love you slyly like a quail. I love you cleverly, like a fox. I love you powerfully, like an ox. I love you busily, like a bee. I love you doggedly, like a flea. I love you gently, like a lamb. I love you boldly, like a ram. I love you cutely, like a koala. I love you briskly like an impala. I love you hungrily like a shark. I love you musically like a lark. I love you colorfully like a parrot. I love you playfully like a ferret. I love you gracefully like a swan. I love you tenderly like a fawn. I love you speedily like a hare. I love you fiercely like a bear. I love you slowly like a sloth. I love you quietly like a moth. I love you blindly like a bat. I love you softly like a cat. I love you friskily like a foal. I love you deeply like a mole. I love you bravely like an eagle. I love you freely like a seagull. I love you exceedingly like a giraffe. I love you warmly like a calf. I love you loyally like a dog. I love you enormously like a hog.
I love you, birdly, buggly, animally. I love you so for your my family. The end. So if you're interested in any of these books or any Usborne books, look in the description and I will have a link directly to the store and you will be able to get it home. I think mine came in a week. So you can get your books in just a few days, maybe even a week. They mail out from Oklahoma. So depending how close you live to Oklahoma, but I was surprised how fast they got here. Okay, hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.